as a super senior. I joined in a program conducted by Nagaris Geotech Company. Their aim is to spread information related to space and its programs to young children so that they'll get inspiration and they'll be motivated to join in courses. Other than like and the continues into machines of space science, aerosolics and the obstacle. Satellite building and other things. So I joined in a program, students said. It is a program in our patients, Ashwin Bay. We received a model of the satellite, unbuilt. Uh, we had to build it and they created a continuous course of uh, like polar citron segments in which there were online classes and uh, quizzes. I learned so much information that changed my perspective of how the whole satellite world looks like. Now I want to share this information with you. The mobile at your home. Everybody. How many of you have a television at your home? Now I've seen a lot of hands raised over here. Now I wondered how they receive their signals. Like how does mobile get its signal and television get its broadcast? Mm -hmm. Yes. It gets its signal and uh, broadcast due to the data transferred to it from the satellite. A satellite is just an object in space revolving around another object. That's it. Now with this definition in mind, and you know that the moon is its natural satellite, right? Yes. Now is that the satellite? Because it revolves around the satellite. Yes. Because according to the definition, everything that revolves around something else is a satellite. And it revolves around the sun. So it's really divided into two different sectors. Interplanetary satellites and planetary satellites. Interplanetary satellites are satellites which do not revolve around the earth. They go around the moon, Mars, or they can go even up to space or deep space ranges or the sun itself. But these planetary satellites are of a major interest as a field. They consist of three different types. They are geostationary satellites. They are majorly divided into three parts based on their orbits. Geostationary orbits and low earth orbits and a middle earth orbit. This is a geostationary orbit. Geostationary orbits are like 36,000 kilometers from our Earth's surface. That's so far that a satellite over there, now they revolve around the Earth with, along with the Earth. They will be rotating around the equatorial plane with a time period being 24 hours. Can anybody guess the direction in which it moves? West to east. Yes, it moves from west to east. Such that it synchronizes with the Earth rotation. And its time period is? Since they are so far away, they are majorly used for telecommunication purposes. Since they can't have cameras and they can't take pictures, they will be having big, large antennas which receive and transmit signals. And low earth orbitals. Low earth orbital satellites majorly consist of polar satellites. Polar satellites revolve around the earth from pole to pole. Like north pole to south pole and south pole to north pole. They are about a distance of 800 to 1500 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Their time period is approximately 100 minutes. Even though they are satellites revolving in a fixed orbit, the Earth rotates around itself. Since the Earth rotates around itself on a daily regular basis, the satellite gets the whole view of the Earth at least once every whole day. So it like completely maps out the Earth. So it's used for cartography. But we are creating much and more accurate maps. Look at the data of changes in weather patterns since they are so close. Middle earth orbitals are orbitals which last between geostationary and low earth orbitals. They majorly consist of semi synchronous satellites. A geosynchronous satellite is one with a 24 hour time period, while a semi synchronous is one with 12 hours. So it repeats twice every day. It doesn't appear to be stationary. And it, even it protects from west to east. It also made, made middle earth orbital satellites are majorly important for a single type of satellite which most people of advanced equipment use as of now. It is navigational satellites. Navigational satellites triangulate a person's position. You have three satellites, all those three map out an area which can be used to determine your position on the earth. That's exactly how GPS works, the global positioning system. Satellites are of different sizes. 
They can be as big as some hundreds of meters with thousands of tons or this small that they can fit in your palm. This is a 10 by 10 by 10 whose dimensions are 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, cubesat. This cubesat was possible because I joined the course and it was only possible due to the help of knowledge. They have sent all these parts. They have made me clear on how to arrange these parts and it made me possible to make a satellite on my own. If you are interested in you can join it. Now, what are the uses of satellites? Can anybody say? A few uses. Hmm? Used communicating. Yes, communication is one of its major uses. Will they report? Yes, spying. That's a really good one. Situations and happening in uh, space. Hmm. We can have uh, the research satellites. Yes. Now, how satellites reach their orbits? By rockets, obviously. But they are called satellite launch vehicles. GSLV and PSLV. The geostationary launch vehicle and the polar satellite launch vehicle are different types, are some of the types of it. They are vehicles, or they are rockets, specially made so that they will reach a specific height, they will tilt around and give enough orbital velocity to the satellite such that it revolves around the earth instead of falling on the earth. That's the very reason satellites don't need fuel in it to rotate. It doesn't need to burn continuously to rotate. It, use, it uses the solar energy so that it can run the machinery inside. Now that we know that satellite works on electricity, let's get to know the basics of electricity. Electricity, a circuit, is the total part taken by a charged particle to reach from high potential to low potential. It's a complete part taken by a charged particle to reach from high potential to low potential. That's a circuit. Circuits are of two different types. It can be open or a closed one. If charge passes through it, it's a closed circuit. If it doesn't, it's an open circuit. These are terms that we frequently use in electricity. They are voltage, voltage, current, and resistance. Potential difference between two different forms and current is the flow of charge. Voltage is denoted with V. Current is rate of flow of charge. It's measured in amperes. It's, it's denoted with I. And resistance is the resistance obstructed to the flow of charge. It's measured in its units are ohms. Ohms is its units. This symbol is R and Ohm's law states that at constant, at constant temperature at constant temperature and pressure the potential difference between two different points is the product of the current flowing and the resistance between it. Simple terms, V equal to IR. This works for most conductors. They are called Ohmic conductors. There are two different types of circuits based on voltage difference. They are series connections and parallel connections. It's a series and a parallel connection. In a series connection, we are going to have all of the components in your system connected continuously one around the other. You won't be having any branching in the system. Now let us imagine this to be a circuit and this to be a bulb. In a bulb resists. Since the bulb is a resistor and the resistance causes it to heat, it lights up. So let us imagine this to be a resistor with resistance R1 and this to be a resistor with resistance R2. Now, the total resistance of this series system, let us assume it to be capital. In a series system, the total effective resistance is equal to the sum of individual resistances. Therefore, capital equals to R plus R. 
while in a parallel series, you will be having a branched out series. Then you have the resistance to be capital R. And this initial resistance to be R1, and this one to be R2, and this to be R3. Right? The total effective resistance inverse is equal to the sum of individual resistances inverse. Right? 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 is equal to 1 by total effective resistance. So, in order to get this R, you need to inverse the whole thing. Which one will have more resistors? Because parallel already has a low resistance, it reduces it. So, in order to have more current passing through for the same difference in voltage, which circuit would you prefer? A series or a parallel? Parallel. That's it. A parallel connection is used for both current flow, while a series connection is used for increasing resistance. Resistance is very important in a satellite because when the resistance is too much, it causes overheating of the satellite. Since satellites require very specific sensors, like if you want a satellite to measure temperature and the satellite starts to overheat, will you get the correct temperature reading? No. If you want the humidity reading and the, does the, and the satellite gets hot, will it take accurate readings? No. Temperature is essentially like a killer of electrical components. So in order to have less resistance, we need to make learn how to effectively reduce the resistance. That's the very reason we chose to discuss about resistance. Which method has the least resistance? Silver. Silver has the least resistance among all metals. Then you might be wondering why don't we use silver all the way? Why do we use copper? Because silver is extremely pricey and copper is much more ductile than silver. Ductility is the property of being made into thin wires. Yes. Ductility and malleability. You all know that. The copper is much more ductile than silver. Even though silver has little resistance, it can send much more electric current through it before burning down. It is not used in normal everyday circuits. It is still used in satellites and special satellites. receives its data from sensors. Sensors are of different kinds. They can be so many different sensors that it can be overwhelming. Well, this is a light intensity sensor. It measures the difference in light intensity in lux. While another one is a digital humidity thermometer. Like you might be wondering what a sensor is, but no, sensors are so common in our daily life. Even your phone has a fingerprint sensor. That's it, face recognition sensor. Everything that senses is a sensor. It's almost as if you're a sensor organ. If you touch it, you're gonna feel it. Now, does just having skin, eyes, and ears and tongue make your whole body? No. So only sensor organs can't work together. So they need a brain to coordinate, huh? Then even a satellite needs its brain equivalent in electrical components. What is the brain of satellite, you might ask? It's the microcontroller. Microcontroller acts as the brain of the satellite. Microcontroller consists of a CPU, central processing unit. CPU. It consists of a ROM, read only memory, R O M, RAM, random access memory. And it also has a timer. You might be wondering why is there a timer in the satellite of its central processing of uh, controller? Microcontroller. Timer controls the capture and compare mode. Capture mode, compare mode. When a satellite captures uh, some input, it can be like taking an image. It, the timer controls how long it takes before it captures another image. It provides a delay. You might be asking why it should there be a delay. A delay is to synchronize all the parts. You can't be having an image taken at one second and information from another second. They all need to be of same second. Specific parts such that all the parts are in synchrony. And it also notes down the time. It notes how long it took before the whole image the processing takes place and how long it has been since the satellite got launched. It needs to have its time count, right? Now, these are the brains and the sense organs of our session. 
Now, would just the brain and sense organs be enough to send it to the space? I think we need something to correct them. They are called characters. Yes. Character wires are the of one of the kind. Characters are of two different types. Majorly male and female characters. Both of them male character goes into the female character and it essentially acts as a wire which connects two different components. So now that we have a brain and we collected all the parts with the sensor gears, does is it enough? I believe since it's a electrical component, it needs something to run, right? It needs electricity to run. Now where are we going to provide this electricity from? Exactly. You can't use a battery? No, no, we need to use a battery. I can't explain. We need a battery. The battery provides enough energy for a few hours. We can't sustain it for the whole day, right? Now, how are we going to charge the battery? We use solar panels mounted on the satellite to charge the batteries. Why do we use a solar panel? Why only solar? We can be using something else. Yes, solar energy is used is much more abundant in space. It literally hits the solar insulation and it's so hot enough that it can run on the solar energy. The solar panels have enough solar energy to run the whole thing. You can't have a diesel engine this small to charge the battery. But you can have a solar panel this small to charge the battery. That's the advantage. It's called compatibility. Can I use a satellite with solar panels to do research on sun? Yes. 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 Of course we can use it. But can I use the same satellite with solar panels as its primary fuel for deep space voyage? No. no. Since they are going so far away from Earth, the solar insulation received on them will be less. So solar energy will become less and less as we go far away from the sun. So the satellites which go deep into the space and venture out, use they use the nuclear energy to power their solar panels instead of solar panels. Of course, even though they are far and far reaching satellites, they still have solar panels so that they can reserve the radioactive material till they reach out for a certain orbit. They still be receiving solar energy up for a day. But when they reach so far, then they will switch into the radioactive. So, space satellites which go on deep space missions do not use solar energy as their primary fuel. They require something to protect it. You can't just throw them in a bag and send it into space. You need something to enclose them. And they need to be stable. They can't be really wobbly in the space. These conditions can't be so loose that they'll be ripped off while going up. They need to be shift. So, these connections are made by soldering into a printed circuit board or into a breadboard. In this mini circuit, I use a breadboard. Breadboard is made for use testing prototypes and it's a reusable one. While a printed circuit is not a reusable one. While a printed circuit is used for permanent So, the satellites all in the space don't use a breadboard. They use a printed one. Now, we have a skeleton that acts like essentially as a skeleton system. It gives structural sound. Why? Right? We have a case which I just saw with this. Is it enough? We have an enclosure, we have the charging from solar panels, we have the power battery, we have the organs, we have the brain. Is it enough to call it a satellite which we can talk to? Now I send this whole part into space and will it communicate with us? No. It can't. Because it doesn't have a mouth or yes. It needs an antenna to receive and transmit signals. Just having the data in it is not any of no, of no use to us. It needs to send the data back to Earth. So it needs a transmitter and a receiver. Why does it need a receiver? Because it receives, it needs to receive the request from I will send it. I want that specific data about temperature as of now. And then the satellite will receive it. And the question will be answered by it sending its transmitting its data. So satellite needs a receiver and a transmitter. Now this is the whole setup of satellite. We can launch it and when you retrieve the satellite, 
you will find that the battery is all puffed up. It's almost like it got overcharged. Wires are burnt because they receive too much current. Can anybody guess why? Yes. Solar power is not a one which you can regulate continuously. Now since the satellites revolve around there, they will be receiving day and nights just like us. While at one specific time, they will be receiving so much energy that the battery will receive much more energy required to charge it. It's like overcharging and overheating it. While at one specific time, it will go back off the earth. No absolutely zero energy. So the whole system runs on this battery. So in order to prevent this overheating and uh, burning of lights, we use a power modulator. A power modulator acts as a middleman. It regulates the re voltage fluctuations. It essentially acts like an MCB in your house. Whenever there is too much current flowing through and the MCB shuts off, that is exactly what a power modulator does. This actually is a cube set which dimensions are there. Now it has a temperature sensor. This is a temperature and humidity sensor. Well, this is a light intensity light intensity sensor. It senses the light intensity of it. You can check whether it works. Now this is the data that we get. It's temperature, humidity, and light intensity. And this small piece, what do you see? This is a pressure sensor. This is a microcontroller. And this part over here, down. That is a power modulator. And the down one is a battery and these are a controller, a light sensor, digital and humidity thermometer, a power modulator, that's all down. You see? That's a power modulator. And that's a battery. Power modulator is between the battery and the solar panel. So you can change see the light intensity change. When you touch on it, it will increase the light in this way. This is the microphone. A pressure sensor. A light intensity sensor. A digital and humidity thermometer. A microcontroller. A microprocessor. This is the power modulator. And that's a battery. Dog. So, microcontroller, a pressure sensor, digital and humidity thermometer, a light intensity sensor, a power modulator, that's a power modulator, that is a bag. This whole thing works. Thank you for everybody to be present over here. You allowed me to share all of my info that I gained personally from the programs that are conducted by Navaris. So, I am very thankful to you.